Hi! Welcome back to our channel and in today's video, I will be discussing a Photoshop frame-by-frame -frame, uh, workflow. So, I'm going to try something different today, uh, which is it's going to be mostly time-lapse. So, this is what I have animated and uh, what you're going to see next is a time-lapse version of that with me um, doing some sort of uh, voiceover on top of it. Uh, explaining in detail my process. So we are going to start with doing the rough animation and I have done that uh, in Adobe Animate. And then uh, I'm also going to discuss uh, tips and tricks when doing the rough animation and the tie downs. And then we are going to do the color and shading in Adobe Photoshop. I'm also going to discuss uh, the basics in frame by frame animation when doing it on, on Photoshop. And lastly, uh, we're going to use After Effects to do additional lighting and additional color grading to our animation. So this is going to be a long video. Uh, I will put timestamps in the description so you can go back and forth between the topics if you want. So uh, let's begin. So the first thing that I do is import the design. So in this animation, I did not do the design. It was done by our character designer, Meg. If you are working in a team, chances are the design would probably come from someone else. So if that's the case, what I do is import the design and break it down into simple shapes. And once I could see the structure, it's much easier for me to draw it in any angle. So the animation is a head turn and this is what I want for the last frame. So this is the last frame. Since I already have the last frame, uh, the next that I'm gonna do is the first frame. So this is now the first frame. Then I decided to change the pose a bit to make it more dynamic. I created a new layer for the arm so that it would be easier to modify. I tried to get the hand pose right first before doing the arm. So this is a trick I learned from other uh, artists. I can't recall uh, whom I've heard this from, uh, but probably a lot of artists are uh, saying the same the same uh, tip. Um, so it's basically to do the uh, hand first before the arm. So for example, if uh, you want this character to hold her uh, waist, so you do the uh, hand first. So I'm not gonna make this uh, super good. I'm just gonna make the hand really quick and then once you have the hand locked in and then you do the arm and let's say for the uh, other hand uh, maybe we'll have that uh, peace sign pose for example and then do the uh, arm so the uh, the reasoning for this is because if you do the arm first before the hand, uh, you might compensate uh, the hand. So for example, uh, I'm gonna do the arm first. And then you'll realize, oh, uh, there's like a uh, big space right here. So you might end up making the hand really big or really small for, for uh, in another situation. If maybe you're lacking space, you might make the hand uh, very small to compensate the remaining space. But if you do the hand first, um, let's say uh, somewhere around here, you're basically locking in the position of the hand and then the arm could just uh, adjust itself that fits that position. So it's much uh, actually much easier uh, to visualize or to do the hand if you pose, or I mean the, to draw the hand and the arm if you do the hand first before uh, the arm. I normally do the more complex uh, action first 
So I have been animating a lot of head turns already, so it's not that complex for me. The challenge was the hand movements. So I decided to do that first. Once I'm happy with the hand and arm movements, I proceed with the head turn. So I mostly use the halves method when in betweening. If you don't know what that means, I discussed that in a previous YouTube video. I'll link that up just in case you want to watch that too. I usually watch my animations again and again just to see if I got the timing correctly. The hand slash arm is still lacking frames, but I think the timing is already good. Now let's make the arm slash hand moves movements more smooth, so let's uh, add more in-betweens. But we can't do that without animating the body. The arm is connected to the upper part of the body, and the arm moves with the body. So if I move my arm like uh, like this, you'll see that this part here uh, also moves. So we need to animate both the arm and the body. So I have the body in a separate layer and the arm slash uh, hand is in a different layer. And it's a good thing that they're uh, separated. Uh, this way I can have the body uh, to stop moving and I can still continue animating the arm without redrawing the body again and again because uh, I have them in a separate layer right I could just expose uh, the body and just continue on the animation for the arm slash hand so another advantage with having the body uh, in a separate layer and the arm in a separate layer is that you could have a different timing uh, for them both and also uh, you also see that the arm overlaps the body right so um, it's also easier to um, make some changes because the uh, arm and the body are separate also for the body as you can see I have a circle uh, representing the shoulder so I could set it that uh, I know exactly where the shoulder would be. And once that's done, I just, you know, um, draw the arm and I already know where the position of the shoulder would be. And take note that this is still, you know, a sketch. So if you could see the structures, that's completely okay because this is still the rough animation. So now uh, I have uh, done the uh, in-betweens for the uh, arm. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing the hand first before doing the, uh, the arm. And here I could uh, like isolate a certain part. If I just want to animate the arm, I can do so. If I want to animate just the body, uh, I could also do so. So here I'm doing the in-betweens for the uh, arm, hand, slash hand going down. It wasn't as smooth, so I added some uh, in-betweens. So frame-by-frame uh, -frame animation is uh, basically uh, like that. You may have an initial plan, and then when you check it, uh, it may seem like it's uh, not that smooth, so you like, continue to adjust and adjust. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, discuss the lasso tool uh, a bit. So the lasso tool is uh, this icon right here. And if you are uh, working in Adobe Animate, the shortcut for that is L on your keyboard. So it's basically uh, this, meaning um, if I want to like adjust the hand, I could just uh, lasso to this. I'm just gonna like draw out this section and it's gonna select that and uh, i'm using adobe animate so if i press q it's gonna open this 
bounding box and I could move this around and then rotate this and adjust. So let me undo that. Um, also, uh, the other advantage of having multiple layers, so I have a separate layer for the head, this a separate layer for the body, and a separate layer for the arm. The advantage of that is I could uh, lock them. So for example, the head, I'm gonna lock the head and the body, meaning I can't anymore select them because they are already uh, locked. So if I'm gonna press L again on my keyboard, that's gonna uh, activate the lasso tool. Now I'm going to draw out only this part. So this is the only thing that's selected, the, uh, the hand, because um, the body and the head are locked, right? And, and then I'm gonna press Q and then, you know, I could rotate this. Um, I also could change like the position of the uh, lower arm. So I could lasso to this, right? Draw out only this part and then press Q. And if you see this like um, small circle, white circle, and that's the pivot. So you can select this and bring it here. That's gonna bring the pivot around here. So when I am going to rotate, it's gonna uh, rotate around that. And then from here, I could like also just lasso to this, press again Q, bring the, the pivot here and then rotate. Um, the only downside to this is it's gonna make your drawing really messy. Like uh, I'm gonna zoom in. Like for example, this one, right? Um, but that's okay because this is still just a sketch, right? With the lasso tool, I can quickly like modify my, uh, my drawings. Uh, and besides, I'm still gonna clean this up later. So uh, I'm just gonna undo this, bring this back to its uh, original um, uh, state. Uh, the next that I'm gonna show you is if I'm gonna press uh, L on my keyboard and uh, lasso to uh, this one, for example, and then I'm gonna press Q, you'll see that you have this uh, small squares, right? And if I'm gonna hold the command key, if you're working on a Mac computer, that's command. If you're working on a Windows computer, that would be the control key. So if you hold that key, so I'm holding that key now, and you can like select any of this small black square, like for, I'm, I'm gonna choose this. So I'm still holding the command key or control key if they're working on a Windows, and then uh, hold, click, and drag, you can like distort, uh, the image, right? So this that's also like a quick way to um, adjust your drawing. So for example, I'm going to just draw out the hand, press Q, hold my command key, and then, you know, modify this, maybe change the perspective. And that's the uh, lasso tool. Initially, I decided to end with this pose, but I thought it's just too basic and i wanted it to have more expression to it i was thinking like this is a, a pov or a point of view kind of uh, animation like you're on a date with this girl and she looks at you and uh, i was thinking what would be her uh, reaction and i wanted to capture uh, that feeling so I decided to add another key pose. So I kept going back and forth and made some adjustments until it felt right. So this new key pose became the new last uh, frame. And once I'm happy with it, it's time to do the in-betweens. So far, so good. Next is I'm going to redo uh, the hair. The hair is uh, a soft uh, material. And previously, it's very stiff. And the hair usually just follows or follows through with the movement of the head. So the hair previously was just a placeholder. So I... Um, I made the key poses for the head uh, with the intention that I I'm going to redo the hair 
later on because the hair uh, should be more soft. Now that we have the full animation, I can now do the hair. So I uh, usually do the hair in uh, straight ahead method. It's not post to pose. Um, it's uh, it's because it's harder to uh, animate in a fluid way when you're doing post to pose. So I usually do that uh, straight ahead. And you need to convey that uh, drag or that dangling animation. So the next uh, thing that I'm going to discuss would be the tie down. So what are uh, tie downs? Uh, it's basically a cleaner version of your rough animation. So it's still considered a sketch, a cleaner version of the sketch. So why do we do that? Why do we go all the trouble to uh, spend time to create a cleaner version of the sketch? Um, the reason is that, um, let's just say, um, th uh, this is my sketch, my rough animation, right? So from rough animation, let's just say I'm gonna go directly to clean up or uh, the, the final thing, the final line art. Um, this is still lacking a lot of information. Like for example here, look at this. Um, there seems to be like a double line. Which line should I follow for the shape of the body? This line or this one? And how about here? Um, up to what point uh, would the shoulders be? Uh, is it here or here, right? In the cleanup phase, you shouldn't like think of those. You should only focus on cleaning up the lines, not correcting the lines. So in the tie down phase, that's basically what you do. You uh, correct those lines and also remove the um, structures. Like for example, I have this guides. So in the tie downs phase, you already like remove uh, those guides and just clean them up. And for example, here, if you look at the hand, like uh, the hand here, see, I don't even have like fingers. I just have like an overall structure of it. So if I'm gonna go directly to clean up, like uh, where would the fingers be, right? And if you go directly to clean up without doing the tie downs, chances are you're gonna commit mistakes. And remember in the clean up, you're already gonna like exert so much effort to make your lines really clean. And if at that phase you're still guessing, um, that's very hard to correct. So in the tie downs phase, you already like make like decisions about like where would that be and make it a bit cleaner so that when you go to the clean up phase or the, the, the color uh, phase, it's so much easier. So basically a um, like cleaning uh, or the tie downs is what I do is I'm just gonna create a new layer and I usually like do a clean up uh, per uh, part. For example, I have three parts here, the head, the body, and the arm. So I'm gonna create like uh, a tie down for the head. So you will see this in the time lapse later on. So I usually rename that to head underscore tie down. And then I'm just gonna hide the arm and the body and then I'm gonna turn on this outline mode, for example. And then I'll proceed and um, create a cleaner version of this. So basically I'm just uh, going to trace this, but now much more uh, clean. And as I like do the other frames, I may I probably would notice some mistakes, and I'm going to like fix those uh, mistakes. Uh, so basically, that's uh, what I do. I turn on the outline mode and just uh, create a like cleaner version of uh, the sketch. So uh, I try to like remove now the uh, the guides. So uh, also checking with the, the reference, always checking with, with the reference. And also if you notice, uh, sometimes I don't fully follow the sketch and I, I like make corrections as I see fit. I make corrections uh, along the way. So now I'm gonna do the clean up for the body. And sometimes, I mean, uh, 
let me correct that i mean i did the tie downs for the body and uh, sometimes when i do the tie downs uh, it's not um 100 correct um that's okay just go back and um uh, fix your mistakes because during cleanup or color or when we go to photoshop there's no more time to correct it um, so you do the, the correction already in the, the tie downs so here as you can see i'm making now the hand more defined and my lines aren't super clean but they are very defined so i could uh, clean this up in uh, photoshop so that's i already have like enough uh, information so in, in tie downs you just make it like more definitive now So here, as you can see, I'm uh, making like corrections. And uh, that's it. We have finished now our uh, tie downs. So the next step would be to bring our animation into Photoshop. So how do we do that? Um, one way to do it is to export our animation as an image sequence because in Photoshop you have an option to import an image as a sequence and then that would become a video clip meaning it's gonna be in the timeline and uh, you could play the, the, the animation so that's one way to bring our animation from Adobe Animate to Adobe Photoshop so uh, to do that, you go here to File, and then go to Export, then Export Movie. That's going to e export the image sequence. So it's going to export these frames as different uh, images. Um, but I want to, uh, when I'm going to import this animation into Photoshop, I want it to be layered. So I want the arm to be in one layer, the head into one layer, and the body into also one layer. So what we need to do is to export the arm as a separate image sequence, the head as a separate image sequence, and uh, so on. So how do we do that? Uh, first, we need to hide everything and then just show um, that part that we want to export. So for example, the head. Because when you click File, Export, then Export Movie, it's only going to export um, the layer that's visible. Uh, it will not include the hidden uh, layers. So uh, I'm going to click this export movie. So uh, now I'm just going to click new folder. And I'm going to rename this as uh, image sequence for the guide. It's, it's a long file. You could choose whatever file name that you want. And in this folder, um, so that uh, the image sequence is not going to be messy, I'm going to group them also into folders. So I'm going to create a new folder. So this is going to be the head, right? So we are going to uh, export the image sequence of the head. So I'm just going to rename this to head. So now we have uh, created this folder and the format is PNG sequence. Um, you could also export this as a JPEG. But I want this to be a PNG sequence so that it has a transparent uh, background. So, and then click Save, Export. So this is now the, the folder. And this is now the image sequence. So as you can see, uh, all of the frames have been exported here. See, uh, it's all, this is now the, the head. Now we are going to do the same for the other parts. Um, so now I have uh, opened uh, Photoshop. So uh, this is going to be our uh, working file. So currently it's untitled, so I'm gonna just rename this. Um, so I'm gonna click Save As and then 
uh, on your computer or uh, wait let me redo that save as and then uh, I'm going to rename this to head dash turn this dash Photoshop and then I'm gonna click this on your computer save on your computer and then uh, I'm gonna click save so uh, this is uh, let's consider this as our working file this is where we're going to color uh, now we need to bring the image sequence we're going to import the animation so to do that click file then open then locate your image sequence so it's this image sequence uh, for the guide and let's try first the head and uh, you need to click the lowest uh, number uh, so this one and then check the make sure this one is checked right because if you don't have this check it will just import this one image this is gonna tell uh, Photoshop that you are in fact importing a sequence of images. So now click open. And then it's going to um, prompt like what kind of, uh, what's the FPS that we are going to use for that image sequence. So you need to match this to your animation in animate. I use 24 FPS, so I'm gonna place here 24 FPS, then I'm gonna click okay. So it's going to create a new file with, uh, this one is untitled. And what we need to do is to bring this to our working file. So um, first, uh, so we already have this like folder and we have this clip. So this is already a video clip. This is already, uh, if uh, if I'm gonna open the timeline right here, right, it's already ha it already has this um, animation. Um, so let me bring that down. So what I need to do is uh, collapse this first and then I'm gonna click this um, video group one, right click and then duplicate group and then uh, the destination would be our working file. So I'm gonna click this and our working file is the head turn uh, Photoshop PSD and then I'm gonna click OK. And then let's go to our working file. It's already here. So we don't need this anymore. I'm just gonna close to this. Um, don't save. Also, just to, um, I'm not sure why this happened. So if I'm gonna uh, open up timeline, if this isn't uh, shown, um, what you could do is go to window and then um, find the timeline here, have that check and you're going to have this. And then you would need to create a a video timeline so I'm gonna click that and then you'll have this now you have a timeline and I could scrub through and um, I, I'm not sure why this problem is happening see it's like going to empty and then it kind of loads uh, in order to fix this we need to convert uh, these to smart object so uh, this clip so I'm gonna right click and then convert to smart object. So now uh, you also see that the layer has changed its color from blue to purple. And do the same for the other others. So I'm going to um, expand this, click this one, right click, and then convert to smart object. And then also for the arm, expand this so that we could see the video clip, right click, and then convert to smart object now they are all smart objects so if I scrub through see it it loads uh, better now okay so before we proceed with the time-lapse I'd like to explain the basics on animating in Photoshop so how do we animate in Photoshop uh, exactly and uh, that's what I'm going to cover uh, right now before we proceed so uh, the first thing that you need is a timeline so I'm gonna compare Adobe Animate and Adobe Photoshop. So we're gonna jump from one software to another uh, back and forth. So first let's take a look at Adobe Animate. So this is Adobe Animate and you have uh, a timeline, right? And uh, what you need is a, a frame. So I'm gonna create a blank keyframe first and you know just draw a circle right here. And maybe move forward in time to around here and I'm gonna press again F7. So I'm adding a new blank keyframe and uh, draw the next frame right here. 
And for this specific frame, I'm gonna expose this. I'm gonna press F5 on my keyboard. So this simply means that one drawing consumes multiple frames, right? Uh, would span at this amount of frames and this one too. And if I scrub through, it has movement. You know, this is like one second, 24 FPS, and I have two frames. One frame spanned at this time and the, uh, the second frame spanned at this specific time. Right? So um, basically, it's uh, animating. And if we go to Photoshop, uh, the concept is the same, but the way Photoshop works or the way Photoshop organizes the files is a bit different, but it's still the same concept. So the first thing that you need is a timeline. So currently I have the timeline right here. So if I double click this, uh, it's going to show this. If you don't have it by default, the timeline isn't uh, on. So uh, how do you have this uh, shown up? So just go to window right here, click that and then locate a uh, timeline. Make sure this is checked. So once that's checked, this is going to appear. And you will need a video timeline. So um, I need to click this. So clicking this one would, uh, then you have this, right? So now it it resembles the, um, the one you see in Adobe Animate. Um, and currently we're, we're like super zoomed out. We, we need to, to zoom in to this uh, specific frame. So to do that, you could click uh, this one, this icon. This one would zoom in and this one right here would zoom out. So this one here, this is the time. I think this one is would span for about uh, five seconds. So this one here is five seconds. Current FPS is right here. That's 29.97. So let's change that. I normally work with 24 FPS in Adobe Animate. So in Photoshop, uh, it should be in sync, right? If you are animating in Adobe Animate uh, using 24 FPS, you should also do the same in Photoshop. So to do that, um, click this icon right here. This like three lines. Uh, that's the menu icon. Click that and then set timeline frame rate right here. Click that. And then let's set this to 24 FPS, or you could just click this arrow and choose, uh, it already has like preset and I'm gonna click this 24, click okay. And now this is uh, 24 frames per second. So this one is the background. So I only have like one layer, that's the background. And I'm now going to create a new layer. So I'm gonna click this, that's gonna create a new layer. So here it's still like your usual thing right when you create a new layer but in the timeline you also have a representation of that layer but currently this layer starts at this point right we we want it to start here so where wherever this um red vertical line is located that's where it will create the new um, frame or layer so for example i'm gonna click this one now you see that it will create that uh, blank uh, layer right here. So let me just undo that. And for this one, I'm just gonna drag it uh, through here so that it starts at this point. Okay, so now let's try and um, draw something. So I'm gonna press B on my keyboard. That's uh, the brush, right? And currently I can't draw on anything, right? Because uh, the way Photoshop works, right, is you need to have a layer selected. So I haven't, I have not selected anything, right? So that's the difference with uh, Adobe Animate. In Adobe Animate, you could just like draw and it would automatically like have like a layer selected. In uh, Photoshop, it's not. Currently, I have nothing selected. So I still need to select a layer. You could either click this or this one. So um, I just have to explain this. This frame this is an empty frame there is nothing in here but this empty frame spans out to about like five seconds and this frame here this is that layer right it's this layer now let me draw a circle for example something like uh this okay and let's move forward in time and let's animate how do i do that how do i add a blank uh, keyframe. How do I uh, 
insert a new blank uh, layer. Um, one thing to do that is to create a new layer, right? And then this one, if you just uh, hover to your cursor to around here, you'll see that the icon changed. So I'm gonna click and drag, could bring it now here and this one to um, bring it here. So now I have this layer and this one in, uh, I have now two layers. So the way Photoshop works, you could uh, like consider that layers are like frames. So layer two, this is layer two and I could draw something right here. And then if we scrub through, you'll see that it's uh, animating. That's one way to go about it. Or the other way, so I'm just gonna undo it, is to split the current uh, layer. So I'm going to uh, maybe around here. So this is, um, how should we call this? Um, the current um, red line is there. If you're gonna click this scissors icon, and I have layer one selected, what it will do is it will split the layer into two based on where this red uh, horizontal, I mean vertical line is. So now I'm gonna click this and then it has split, right? And then you also see here that I have another layer right here because I told you in Photoshop, uh, frames are layers. So now we have two layers, but it's just split it's like a duplicate right so this one has this drawing and this layer also has this drawing so what we need to do is delete this drawing so to delete that uh, the shortcut is we need to select everything first um the other way is just to erase it but that's gonna take a long time so what you just want is uh you want to select all that would be Command A if you're working on a Mac. That's Control A if you're working in a Windows computer. So I'm working on a Mac, so that's Command A for me. So you'll see here that uh, there's this broken lines, meaning I have the whole canvas selected. And now that I have the whole canvas selected, click the Delete key or the Backspace key. And then now it's uh, deleted, right? So now uh, Layer 1 has this drawing and Layer 1 copy is empty so now i could uh, draw something here so currently it's this icon why because the the layer that's selected is layer one remember um the way photoshop works is you need to be on that layer so i need to click this one first before i could uh, draw on it so maybe here um maybe have the circle around here now, if I scrub through my timeline, it now moves. So if I'm gonna add another keyframe, I could, uh, what I've showed you earlier, I could have, I could create a new layer and then manually like just have it like that and this one too, but that takes like a lot of time. So it's better if you just click this, split, and then I'm gonna select this one, Command A to select everything, then press backspace or delete uh, key. And then now we have an empty, now this one is an empty frame and uh, I could now draw on this, right? So uh, you might be wondering, okay, it, it works um, similar to Adobe Animate, but um, does this really have to happen that every time I add a, uh, a frame, like it stacks up? And you'll notice that if you have a lot of frames, uh, the stack would really be like very long. Why can't it have, why can't it be in just the same like row, like the one in uh, Adobe Animate, like right here. So I could like add like multiple frames and it's just like one row, right? So how do we do that in Photoshop? So to do that, what you need to do is just uh, click this layer, hold, click and drag and bring it here. And then you'll see that now they are on the same row. And also it will automatically like create this video folder, video group. And now they are on the same like video group. Um, also, if it will not allow you to group the video clips like this, um, you still need to enable it. So go to menu, this uh, three lines or four lines, um, click that, the menu icon. 
and make sure that you have this enable auto grouping of clips enabled so currently i have it enabled so this one i could bring it here now they are all in one group now if i'm gonna split this layer or frame it's not anymore gonna place it on top because it's already like in one group so i'm gonna click this split it's gonna be like that so now it resembles like the one we see on uh in adobe animate so currently two layers are being selected so if i'm going to draw something it's not gonna allow me because you can't draw on like two layers at the same time so you need to click one layer first so this is what i want and currently we have we still have the like drawing from uh, the previous layer so that's uh, command a then press uh, delete and then um, how about the onion skin? Um, if you want to enable the onion skin, uh, go back again here on the menu, click the, here, and then enable onion skin. So now I could see the previous frame. And if you go back to menu and then onion skin settings, you could adjust like how many frames before you want to see and how many frames after that you want to see. Currently, it's only one frame. So if I bring this to 10, or uh, eight, so it's now uh, going to be uh, like this. So uh, eight is the, the maximum amount uh, that you could see uh, prior. So it will not allow you to bring this to 10. So I'm assuming the frames after is also eight, but I don't really use, um, I don't really use the uh, onion skinning in Photoshop, I, I just, feel like it's not as good as Adobe Animate because for example I'm going to create uh, for example our background is white right um, how about we change the background color so I'm gonna click this paint bucket tool and then let's change a different color maybe uh, blue something like this and then click so it's dark it's very dark it's because it's onion skinning also the background so if we're gonna like disable onion skin it's gonna be uh like that right um and if we enable the onion skin uh it's onion skinning also the the background so it's now like uh, very saturated you you don't get that in in adobe animate which is why i i like to animate in adobe animate first before like animating in um in photoshop also, if I have like multiple layers in Adobe Animate, I'm just gonna change this to red. And you know, for example, I'm going to animate uh, this circle too, for example. For example, like that. And I'm gonna set, uh, this is the onion skin, right? Uh, what if I don't want to see the onion skin of this blue circle? I could just lock this and it's not gonna be like shown in the onion skin in Adobe Photoshop, um, you don't get that. So even if I lock this, it will still show on my onion skin. So uh, for example, I hide this and then let's uh, create a new layer, right? And let's um, create a different animation. For example, uh, this one, move forward in time, split this, click this one, and uh, let's merge this already like in, in they are in one row right and then command a then delete so now i have deleted that and proceed to like animate right here and you'll see that no matter what i do even if i lock this see i've already locked it i, I could still see it on here it's still onion skinning right so that's the reason why i don't want to like uh, animate the rough animation in photoshop i like animate in adobe animate first and then I only like use Adobe Photoshop for uh, like the, the textures. So you might be wondering, oh, if it's really that bad to animate in Photoshop, why animate in Photoshop in the first place? Um, the reason is uh, Photoshop is a very good um, digital painting tool. You have a lot of br brushes right here and most of them are free, right? Um, and you don't get that with uh, Adobe Animate. So let's go to Adobe Animate. With Adobe Animate, you just have this um, vector brush and it's not very good at that either. 
right? So you have this brush that's uh, not really that good. And with Photoshop, you have a ton of uh, different brushes to to choose from. And it's it. So I'm just gonna remove the onion skin. So I'm gonna disable the onion skin. So with this, you know, you could have your animation with that specific like feel that you want. And that's the only time that I use Photoshop if the design is something that I could not achieve in Adobe Animate. So uh, basically, that's the whole concept of animating in Photoshop. So if you want to preview your animation, I think the shortcut is uh, the spacebar. Right, so, uh, so I'm just gonna delete this and I'm just going to like animate like uh, more properly. Um, and let's just change this to maybe black. And I'm gonna create a new layer first. And let me draw a circle right here, maybe a bouncing ball. And then I'm gonna zoom it, zoom the timeline. So this is now the timeline. Uh, I'm gonna animate on two, so skip a frame. And he here I'm going to split this, right? So I'm gonna select this one and delete this so that it's empty. Command A, then delete. And then for this one, uh, I'm just gonna group them together. So now that they are grouped. And I'm just gonna turn on the onion skin. And then uh, I'm gonna change the onion skin settings. Onion skin settings. And then instead of eight, I'm just gonna make it one. And so I could now animate this. So I'm not going to complete this anymore, but I'm just going to show you like you can animate in Photoshop. But I normally don't do this. Again, uh, I normally don't uh, animate the, the rough, like the rough animation in Adobe Photoshop. I usually do that in animate and just uh, do the color in Photoshop here. So I'm not sure, I'm just, I'm just going along with this just to show you like a very simple animation and then let's preview this and so even in preview, um, the onion skin is shown. I don't like that about Photoshop. But anyway, I'm just gonna, uh, we just have to make do with what we have. So I'm just gonna click this and then turn off the onion skin and then let's have a look. So now it's gonna look like that. So basically, uh, that's it. So before we proceed with the time lapse, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, DigiPaint. I'm not an expert in digital painting, but I do have a little bit of knowledge. And in order for you to animate effectively in Photoshop, you also need a little bit of knowledge in digital painting. So here we go. So the most basic thing about uh, painting is you need to know about uh, lighting. So I'm just gonna choose uh, a color. So the, the first term that you need to know is the base color. Um, it's the color of the, the object. So for example, if the color of the object is red, the base color is red. So uh, okay, let's just use red as a color and I'm just gonna use sphere as an example. So for example, uh, I'm gonna use uh, this. So we have a circle or a sphere, and this is the, the base color. Now, depending on where the light source is coming from, so I'm just gonna decide that the light source is coming from here, then this object would have some shadows. So the shadow of this would be um, darker than red. So it would be darker than the uh, base color and if the light source is coming from here, then this part would be in shadow. Now the next uh, term you need to know is highlights. 
So if the um, light source is coming from here, and uh, depending on the material, um, it's going to cast some highlight. So the highlight is a lighter color than the uh, base color. So um, there's a shortcut in Photoshop. So that is Option key if you're working on a Mac. And that's the Alt key if you're working on a Windows. Um, if you hold that key, it's going to transform. If you look at the cursor, it's now a uh, eyedropper tool. So while ho holding that key, I'm still holding that key. I'm going to click this. And then it's going to select that color. If I'm going to release the Option key or the Alt key, it's going to go back to my brush. Okay, now that we're back on the red, I'm going to click this. And I'm going to choose a lighter color than my base color. So maybe somewhere around here. And then now this is the, the highlight. And that's basically um, digital painting. So now we have the base color, the shadow, and the highlight. And uh, the next step, because if you look at this, it's um, a bit flat, right? If you want this to, to smoothen out, um, there are a lot of ways you could uh, go about it. So um, the, the first way is to bridge the gap. So we have here uh, red, a bright red, and a darker red. So what we need to do is to bridge that uh, gap. We need um, some transition here, a color here that's in between them both. So uh, I could, again, press the Option key or Alt key, right? Click the base color, and then I'm going to click this one, and then um, pick a color that I think are in between them. So maybe around here, something like that, and then uh, draw this uh, in between. Now, if I want to, the term is to blend. If I want to blend this a bit more, then I need to uh, choose uh, the transition from this color to this color and put them at the middle. So that's uh, one way. Um, the other way, because I'm using this brush and it's a bit sharp, the other way is just to use a soft brush. So first, you um, use a sharp brush for your shadows and highlights. And then when you're blending, you can choose a soft brush. So something like this. See, it's not sharp on the edge. It's a bit like feathered, right? So if you like paint that over here, it's somehow like going to, to blend, right? Or we could make the brush bigger. And, and then now I'm going to select a color between this and this. So I'm going to... Um, hold the option key and choose this color, the base color, and then try and figure out what's in between them. I think this is the, the uh, color that could bridge the gap. So uh, basically, that's uh, another way. Um, there's also another way, which is just using the smudge tool. So it's this uh, icon. So if you hold click this, you'll have the smudge tool, blur tool, choose the smudge tool, and then uh, it's basically just mixing color. So I'm just gonna um, like draw this. As you can see, they are already like blended. So um, those are like ways on how you can uh, blend. So a form shadow, so for example, this is um, a sphere, right? And we added shadows right here. This is what you call a form shadow because this is the shadow um, that, that was formed because of the form of the object, right? Because this is a uh, circular, a sphere, like it, it's brown, and the light source is coming from here. So this part here isn't getting much light, so that's why it's darker. It's, it has shadows because of the form of your object. A cast shadow, on the other hand, so for example, you have a light source here, and let's say this is the ground. So there will be, so I'm just gonna change, uh, choose a much darker color. There would be a cast shadow. So the sphere is casting a shadow on the ground. And usually the cast shadow is much darker than the form shadow. So uh, how can you use this information on our um, animation? 
um, it's because we have the arm and the body. So let's just say, I'm not gonna draw this uh, well, I'm just gonna draw this very quickly. Let's just say this is our body, okay? And we have our arm right here, for example. Okay, that's, that's the arm. And the arm, because uh, the arm is like a cylinder shape, form, right? Um, it's going to have a form shadow right here, right? If the light source is coming from here, it's going to have form shadow right here. But uh, since the arm and the body are, they're not one object, right? The, the body is like a different object. So the arm would cast a shadow on the body. So what we could do is like add a much darker shadow and this one now is the arm is casting a shadow on the body and this one is the form shadow. So now I'm going to discuss the tools that I used. Uh, so it's basically, it's just uh, these two brushes and I'm using Kyle's uh, brushes right here. Um, it's actually a free brush. So if you have um, Adobe Creative Cloud, you have access to this and you have a ton of like brushes to choose from. So going back here, um, I, I don't know exactly what, or I already forgot what brush I used uh, or the brush we used for these, but it's it's a Kyle uh, brush. It's a brush from uh, Kyle. Um, so this is the brush and um, the method that I use to blend is using a smudge brush. This is a smudge brush. See, you can see that uh, the smudge tool is highlight highlighted. So this is the, the effect. So next, uh, I'm going to give you some tips on how to make um, painting in Photoshop much faster. So I'm gonna press B on my keyboard, that's the brush. So I have no layer selected. So let me create a new layer. So now this one's selected and I'm just gonna choose any color. So for example, I'm gonna like make a circle and what if you want to color it, right? Um, init initially, or the default way of thinking is to color it uh, like this, right? Until you, you fill up everything. That's, uh, that's gonna take a very long time. The other way is to use a pa paint bucket tool. So if you're gonna click this or the shortcut for that is G on your keyboard, and then if we're gonna click here, it's not gonna be filled. But the problem with this is you still have um, like some parts, depending on your brush, if your brush has like a bit of soft edges, it's not gonna be fully filled up. So you still have this part here to clean up. And uh, there's another way, so I'm just gonna do undo that. There's another way, so if we you press W on your keyboard, this is the shortcut for the magic wand tool. So if I'm going to click here, you'll see that this part here is already selected. So if I'm gonna like zoom in, you will see the, the broken lines. So this part here is selected. Well, having that selected, um, if we go here on this select and then modify and then expand, what it does or what it will do if I click OK is it will expand the selection by two pixels. So um, let's just change this to maybe five and then click OK. You'll see that now the, uh, the selection is now much bigger. So this will solve the problem of just the paint bucket tool. And then um, because we have now a bigger selection, now go to uh, edit and then fill. Click this to fill. And then we're, what, what this will do is it will fill up our selection using the foreground color. This is the foreground color. I'm gonna click okay and then that's it. And let's remove the selection. Have, uh, and have a look to remove the selection. The shortcut is Command D if you're working on a Mac. That's Control D if you're working on a Windows. And now uh, it's like that. And that may be a lot of steps, right? You press W, you click, you go to select, modify, expand, and then go to edit, then fill. 
it's a lot of steps. Um, and what you could actually do is save that as an action. So what actions are is it basically just saves those steps into just one key on your keyboard. And I have set it that if I press F2 on my keyboard, it's gonna do all those things. So for example, I'm gonna like um, make a circle right here. I'm gonna press W on my keyboard and have a selection. If I press F2, it's gonna do all those things. The select, modify, expand, then fill. And now we have this. So as you can see here, um, there's still a bit of um, like parts that wasn't filled up. It's because my uh, the one that was set up on my F2 command was to expand by two pixels. And remember, uh, when we look at here, the two pixels wasn't uh, enough. I probably need to adjust this um, later on. But for demonstration, I'll just uh, stick with my current settings. So I'm not anymore going to teach you how to create uh, actions or how to save actions. Uh, if you want to know how to create your own actions, uh, you might want to search for a different channel uh, about that. There's a lot on YouTube that already like would show you how to save actions. So really when I'm doing uh, or I'm painting in Photoshop, uh, my mindset is a layering approach. So it's like I start with the base color and then add the shadow, then ha uh, ha add highlights, and then bridge the gap. And then adding, adding more, adding more, adding more. Basically, that's how I approach. So um, let me demonstrate, um, like I'm gonna do a hair, the, the hair of, the, of a character, just to like demonstrate this. So I'm going to delete this. I want this layer three to be empty. So I'm gonna uh, Command A, or that's Control A, then I'm gonna press delete or backspace. So it's gonna delete everything. Now uh, I'm going to um, just select a neutral color somewhere here. And the reason why I'm gonna select a neutral color so that the shadows, I could have it darker and the highlights, I could have it lighter. So if you're gonna choose a uh, base color that's already very light, it's hard to go lighter than dark that. Or if you're using a base color that's very also dark, it's harder to add shadows to it because the base color is already like dark, right? So maybe the uh, safe way is somewhere around here for the base color. So I'm gonna use this. And let me just draw a character. So uh, this is just, um, this is what I'm going to color. So now I'm gonna press W, I'm gonna fill this up. And currently, if you can see, I already pressed W on my keyboard, but uh, the cursor isn't the magic one tool. Why is that? It's because I already have this selection. So in order for magic wand to work, you need to have your um, selection deselected. So to do that, that's Command D if you're working on a Mac, that's Control D if you're working on a Windows. So now the selection is deselected. And as you can see, the cursor is now back to the magic wand tool. So I'm gonna click this, and then I'm gonna press F2 on my keyboard, and then press again W, and then press F2 on my keyboard. And then I'm just gonna clean up this uh, excess parts right here. So remember the next step that I do is the shadows. So I'm going to create a, uh, or select a color that's darker, but not too dark so that I still have an option to make it darker later on if I want. And then I'm just gonna make the brush size a bit bigger. So as you can see, it's going off the base color, right? If I do that, um, another trick that I use is just to click this lock. So I select this layer tree and click this lock. What it does is it's not going to draw over what is already there, right? So if I'm gonna do this, you know, see, it doesn't go over here. So again, if uh, I'm just going to apply like what I've learned Right, that uh, think of it like it's a sphere that we're doing. And then uh, next is the uh, highlight color. So 
I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key and then click the base color and then choose a much lighter color right here. So this part here is going to like uh, get some light and also here and maybe a bit here also and also this part. So it's basically just analyzing the light source and which part of uh, which part of the object that's not gonna get much light, so that's gonna be darker, which part of the object is gonna absorb light, so that's gonna be much uh, lighter. And then I'm just gonna use the option or Alt key, right, to, to click the color. If like I want to adjust the shadow or adjust the base color, make it like this. And then once uh, this is done, um, if you look at the hair, there there's like a portion of the hair that's like really shiny, right? Depending on the kind of hair that you have. So I'm gonna like option key this, and then I'm gonna like select a much lighter color, and then maybe make the brush a smaller size, and then let's have like a few strands, like really bright. And maybe here it's gonna like capture some like very uh, light. And then you could go on and on with this, right? It's still not white, right? So I could go a bit lighter and maybe make the brush a bit uh, smaller. And then like add those highlights. So basically it's, I'm like layering, right? It's like adding on top, adding on top. But you also have to be careful not to add too much highlights, right? Because if like the whole image is already in highlight, that's not anymore the highlight color, right? Remember, uh, it's like a balance between like dark and light. You need to, to balance those things. So it, it's not super detailed, but I think you already got the, the idea, right? Um, now it, it does look a bit good already, even with just uh, like, it's still lacking like a lot of details. I could still like put in more time here and then make this more detailed. Or I could still like, for example, the base color and the shadow, I could still bridge the, the gap, right? Um, and maybe make the brush size a bit bigger and then I'm gonna eye drop the color here and then bridge the color, right? Uh, maybe bridge some something like this just to soften or there are other ways to soften could also use the soft brush that's another way or you could use the smudge tool so maybe like if you want to soften this it's also a balance uh, I, I like to combine like soft brush with like sharp brush right I, I like the look that there are portions that are soft and there are portions that are uh, very sharp next is how do we apply all of this to our animation? So I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to demonstrate a pseudo animation. I'm not gonna animation for real. I'm not gonna animate on the timeline because it's gonna take too much time. So I'm just gonna like pseudo, like fake an animation. So let's just say that these are frames in my animation. This is frame one, frame two, frame three and frame four. Let's just say this is the timeline. And let's say the animation is a ball from above uh, falling down. So uh, let's just use the red color. So how I approach this is I animate layer by layer. Uh, not layer by layer literally, like layer by layer here, but the approach I was talking to you about base color, shadow, highlights, and then bridging the gap, adding details, adding details, and then putting on top, putting on top until I have a, an image that is more detailed and more close now to the design. So for example, I start with like a ball right here. And for frame two, I'm still gonna do the base color. And for frame three, base color, and maybe here it goes uh, flat, base color, for example, like that. and. Once I'm done with the base color, I go back again to the first frame and then I add in the shadow. So I'm gonna choose a, 
a darker color. So shadow, shadow, shadow right here, and then you know shadow right here. And then I go back again to the start and then choose the highlight color. So something lighter, something like this. Highlight, highlight, um, go back again here, highlight, and then highlight. And then the next is I go back again to the first frame and then um, what I used in this specific animation is I use this uh, smudge tool to, to blend. So I go back here and then I uh, blend them together, blend this together, uh, blend this together, and also here blend this together. And then I go back again at the start to add more detail. Let's say for example, there's uh, like a white highlight. So I go back to the start and maybe like add something like that. So here I have started with the face and just like what I said earlier, uh, I start with the base color first. And then I actually have split the head into different parts. I have the head and I also have the hair, the front part of the hair that you'd see in a separate group. So the same concept, I do the base color for the front part of the hair first. And then now I did the uh, the one at the back part of the hair. So it's a separate uh, video group. So now I did the base color for the, the eyes. And as I've mentioned earlier, I do it layer by layer. So now I did the shading for the, uh, the eyes and then the um, what you call that is that the iris or the pupil next. So I keep on adding details, adding details until it feels more complete or more close to the, the design. And as you can see, I flip back and forth between the design and uh, my work because I want to make it as close as possible. I always check my references. So now I'm adding uh, shading and here I'm adding uh, highlights. So now I decided to do the shadows and then I use the um, smudge tool to soften the, the edges. So I don't make it uh, all the way soft. Uh, I still want that hard like edge. It's like a combination of uh, them both. So knowledge about lighting would really help here because as the head would move, the face would move, um, you should know where the, the shadows are. And uh, it, it would be easier if you know uh, lighting, you know, like if the light source is coming from here, where would uh, the shadows be? That would be your guide. So now I'm doing the lips. So again, base color and then details. And now adding shading to the lips and then adding highlights. So now I'm adding a little bit of, of cast shadows. So the nose is like a bit extruded uh, on the face. So it's gonna have like a little bit of like cast shadow. Also the lips. So adding cast shadow would like give your overall illustration some volume. So 
So here, adding cast shadow on the neck. So the head is casting shadows on the neck. So now it's looking more like the design. So now I did the shadows for the hair first. So now adding um, some highlights to the hair. And then that shiny part, I've also added that in. So it's similar to what I did in the demo earlier, right? So now I added some highlights on, on the face, just a subtle amount. So here I did some refinement. Just fleshing out the face uh, a bit more, doing some blending, some more blending. So I took a long time uh, getting the face or head right. So now I'm doing the detail for the ears. So I'm like doing this part by part, like the face, the eyes, and so on. So now I'm doing the body first. And then the shoulder. I don't know if you could see, but I'm adding like shading to the body. So now I'm doing the arm. So I did the arm uh, in a darker color because this is supposed to be in shadow. But it's too dark so I think I decided to uh, change the color. So it's not working so I decided to make it lighter. So now adding the form shadows and then blending it. For the fingers, I made it, I like just created s some darker strokes just to make the fingers more uh, noticeable. So basically, that's just my, my process. 
Start with the base color, then the form shadows, then the highlight colors, and then I just uh, add on top of it or add details as I go. So here I'm basically just uh, adding some refinements and I decided to add earrings to uh, this character and make the like lips brighter. So next we are going to import the Photoshop to After Effects and do some finishing touches. So first let's import. So when you import your Photoshop file, make sure that the import as uh, selection here is set to composition retain layer sizes. Then click open, uh, click OK. So basically it created a comp for me, but let's create a new comp. So I'm going to click this icon to create a new comp and I'm just going to set this to HD 29.97 or maybe 24 since we already have 24 FPS for our animation. Let's just uh, match them. And for the duration, uh, let's, I'm just going to change this to maybe 10 seconds, then click OK. So now this, uh, this is going to be our main comp. So I'm just going to rename this to main comp. And I'm going to bring this head turn Photoshop to our main comp. So I'm going to drag that uh, here. And we have this animation. And uh, as you can see, it, she is missing an arm. So let's go inside this comp and see what's happening. So all of the video group in Photoshop, when you import that in uh, After Effects, it's gonna be in a separate comp. So it's like, it's already layered. So I have hidden the arm right here. So I'm just gonna reveal this, make this visible. And uh, we now have uh, this full like animation. And as you can see here, I also have like my guide. I could delete, we don't need them anymore, right? It's just a guide. and. So I'm just going to select this and delete so that we have like just minimal layers. And for the background, uh, I'm also going to delete this because um, we're going to do some editing in the, the main comp and we just need the animation as a, a footage. So the first thing that I'm going to do in After Effects is add some additional uh, lighting. So currently, um, the character is well lit. It's like um, she is in a bright uh, room, right? And I want to change that, and I I want to to modify that a little bit because remember at the beginning I told you that my intention of this animation is like a POV, a point of view, like you are on a date with uh, this character, this person, and um, dates are usually be happens at night, right? So maybe uh, after dinner they have a walk right um, maybe in the park or, or or somewhere what i have in mind is the background uh, i don't know if you could visualize this but i will show this later on but the background is like you see this like lights but they're in a like bouquet right if you're gonna like shoot that in a like camera it's gonna be like blurred i want that to be the background so first thing I'm going to do is make the scene or make the character be in that location to be like dark. So I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm currently outside, right? This is the main comp. I'm not inside this. Let's uh, add the, the lighting. So I'm using a newer version of After Effects and it's different than the previous version when you do like alpha mats. And it's gonna make this video really long if I'm going to discuss the new way to do alpha mats. So I'm just gonna like do this very quick. But basically, like I'm adding like a uh, what I'm I'm doing. I'm just gonna show you. So I have now two uh, copies of this. So at, uh, the the one on top, I'm just gonna uh, add a fill effect here, 
and change the color. So I'm gonna apply a, a blending mode of multiply on this uh, layer. So I want this to be nighttime, right? So maybe something like a, a blue color to be multiplied. The blending mode will be multiplied. So it, I, I guess some, something like this. And then for the blending mode, I'm going to select multiply. So now she is now like in the uh, dark. And what we want and or what I want, um, we already have like an initial lighting. The light is coming from on this side. So what I want is, you know, make it like that, right? But if I do that, we have this like excess um, color here that we don't really want. So uh, we need to mask that to our original, um, to our original illustration. So the new way of doing that is I have here the track mat and you know just equip it here. That's gonna make the one at the bottom invisible or hidden. So I could just show this like that, and now we have this. So it's okay. Um, it's not perfect. It's okay. But the highlights here is only for the hair. I don't get like highlights for the head, right? And um, that's crucial. I want the head to also capture or the face to capture a portion of the light, but I can't really like do it here, right? So that's where the layers come in. So if you have everything in one layer, then this is the result. You can't really like do much with the lighting. So let me just delete this. So um, let's go inside of the scomp and apply that technique. Right, so now I have like a different layer. So for the um, the hair front, this is the hair front, and I also have a different layer for the face details. Anyway, I'm looking for the head. So this is the okay. This is the head color, and I'm going to duplicate the head color. We're going to apply that uh, concept to you know create a like. Uh, a different color on top like a blue color and apply the multiply uh, blending mode so I'm gonna uh, add a feel effect to this and and it's gonna be like uh, a blue color like this and then change the blending mode to multiply okay and then for the track mat because we're gonna like apply something like this but you see there are some excess if I move this, there would be excess here. So we need to mask that with the original uh, illustration. So I'm just gonna use this pick whip tool and then it's gonna be like that. And I'm gonna uh, show or reveal the original. So now this is the, um, how should we call this layer? Uh, maybe the shadow, okay? This would be our additional shadow. So I'm just gonna rename this to head color. I'm just gonna, add um, dash shadow to the file name so I'll know that it's the shadow and I'm just gonna change the color of this whatever you like I'm just gonna make it blue and then I'm gonna bring this on top so that the uh, the eyes would also be included uh, something like that or maybe just below the hair because we have uh, we don't really like want that right so I'm just gonna bring this just below the hair front um, something like that and I'm gonna press T on my keyboard and then maybe change the opacity to around 70% um, maybe something like that is good and let's apply let's apply uh, let's apply the same thing for the like hair front so I'm gonna duplicate this And uh, I'm just gonna preview this. So now it's uh, having that uh, feeling already um, that it's uh, nighttime and there's probably light at the back and um, it's very good. I like the mood. And so far it's uh, so good. And uh, I'm just gonna adjust a few things here. Like for example, the uh, head so I'm going to look for the like head 
Where's the head shadow or head color shadow? Just gonna change it right here. And I forgot to change the names and uh, the layer colors. So I'm just gonna do that first. So now I have renamed uh, the layers, added dash shadow to the layer name and changed the layer color to blue so that I could easily like select if ever like I just wanna choose the, the shadow. So this one is the earring for the body shadow. I want to extend this a bit, uh, maybe something like that. And currently the shadow is sharp. It has a, I mean, uh, yeah, the shadow is sharp. It has a sharp um, edge. And I wanna change that. Um, I want it to be soft. So for example, in the head, head color shadow right here, I want it to be soft. So I'm gonna add a blur to this. So you could choose um, whatever blur that you want, but I'm going to use Gaussian blur. And you'll see now it will soften the edge. So I'm just gonna copy this effect and then paste it to the other um, shadow. And uh, I forgot to add shadow to this hair. Uh, the one at the back right here so i'm gonna do that and i'm just gonna preview this so so far so good and now let's go to our main comp so i'm gonna click here this is our uh, main comp and and now um i'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and let's add glow to this. So I'm just gonna type glow right here and double click. And then I'm gonna like tinker around with the settings right here. So, so far so good. If you want to lessen the shadow, we could just lessen the opacity inside. Um, now let's add the background. Initially, what I had in mind was to create uh, those like city lights, uh, city bokeh lights, um, because it's easy to do, right? You just uh, create some shapes like hexagon and you know blur effect. And then um, it came to me, why not just uh, get a photograph of that and let's import it, right? So um, that's what we are going to do. So I have here the Pexels uh, website and I have searched uh, CT Bokeh uh, photos. And you also you need to be careful if you're gonna use uh, pictures or photograph. Pexels is a free site and it's okay, it's safe to use the uh, photos here. So you can't just go to a Google search and search the image that you want and just use it because they are protected by copyright law. So um, if you use Pexels, um, this is like safe. Or if you're gonna purchase on Shutterstock because you purchased it, then uh, you could use it depending also on the license. So you need to consider all of those. Now let's um, take a look here. What are, or let's look for an image that we could use. Maybe something like this for the background or something like this, or we could like download this and just crop uh, this part right here. But let's continue to like scroll down. So this one's really good uh, for our purpose. So let's use this. Um, but before we use this, um, let's take a look at the license. Up here, uh, free to use, okay. Uh, so I'm gonna click this. So legal simplicity, what is allowed? All photos and videos on Pexels are free to use. That's good. Attribution is not required. Giving credit to the photographer or Pexels is not necessary, but always appreciated. Um, so attribution is not required. I'm uh, not required to like put the link, but I'm a nice guy. So I'm gonna give credit to this guy. It's gonna be in the description and the link would also be in the description. 
and we can modify the photos and videos from Pexels. Be creative and edit them as you like, so it's safe. So let's download this and import it to our project. So I have imported the image, it's right here. So let's drag it to our project. So it's actually looking good, but it's too bright. Um, it's taking the limelight from the character. I want the character to be the main subject. So uh, I want the background to be uh, black. So I'm gonna bring that uh, here at the very bottom. And for this background, this image, I'm going to set the opacity. I'm gonna lower the opacity. To something uh, like that um, something like that and I'm just gonna bring the preview to around here so let's preview this so it's now looking good it's now like a, a short film right um, let me adjust the color of the character so I'm gonna click this one and I'm gonna add um, Lumetri color. So I'm gonna double click this. And Lumetri color is usually um, applied to like footage, but it could be also applied to our illustration. So if you expand the basic correction right here, you can adjust the temperature and um, the tint. So you don't want the color of the um, character to be like warm, right? Because during nighttime, uh, the shadows, if you watch closely, the shadows during nighttime is a cool color like a uh, blue. But lights uh, generally are like warm. So we need to like adjust this to combine like the warm and cool colors. So maybe change this to six. And the tint, maybe change this to maybe 10 or 12. So it still has that blue, bluish color, but still uh, giving it more warmth. So uh, let's see the before after. This is without Lumetri and this is with Lumetri. And uh, it's very subtle, but that makes all the difference. I like like adding like subtle um, things that makes, uh, that gives my animation like more um, life. So we still, this is already good, but we still have uh, a bit of problem because it's too dark. And somehow this part right here is like disappearing in the background. So what can we do? We can add like a rim light right here. And uh, what would be the color of that rim light? So. If we take a look at our background, you see a lot of like yellow lights here. So maybe I'm gonna add like a yellow um, highlight here just to separate the hair from the background. So let's do that. Let's go inside this comp. And um, let's start with the hair, right? Um, so this is the hair front. So I'm just gonna duplicate the original illustration Oh, so I forgot to change the uh, the name of this. So let me do that real quick. So I'm just going to rename the layer name of this to shadow and then change the color of this to blue. Okay. And now for the original hair front, I'm going to duplicate this. Bring this uh, on top right here. So we have now this. And I'm going to uh, apply a fill effect. And let's change this to like yellow. But what we want is like only have this part here in yellow. So um, I'm going to duplicate this. So we have now like I have both copies. Okay. And for this one, I'm going the track mat. I'm going to place it here. So now it's that's hidden and if you're gonna click this option, that's going to invert the mat. And then for the original um, original illustration, I'm just gonna move it uh, right. Something like this. Okay, so 
Now for the highlights, um, for this one, let's change the blending mode to add. And I'm just gonna change the opacity a bit because I want the original color to still be there. And let's apply Gaussian Blur just to keep with the style. So I'm gonna add Gaussian Blur to this. Um, so it's not really like having an effect. So maybe I added the Gaussian Blur to the wrong layer. Let's try uh, this one. And yeah, this is what I want. So now let's uh, go back to our main comp and like have a look. So uh, it's actually like making the shot uh, better. Um, let's apply the same to the, the body since this is capturing some of the yellow light. Uh, let's do the same here. So it's now gonna be like that. Let's go back to our main comp and then let's preview. I do think it's too um, bright. So I'm going to change or adjust the color of this or the opacity. Maybe change this to 20%. I just want this a subtle um, effect. Or to make it even more subtle, I'm going to increase the Gaussian blur so that it's much more feathered like that. And it's uh, so much better now. So that's, uh, but I want the head or the face to be um, to be the main focus. So I'm just going to lessen the shadow of the uh, in the face. So let me locate that. It's gonna be one of this blue layer. It's gonna be that head color shadow right here instead of 70. Let me change that to 50 percent, or maybe that's too low. Maybe 60 percent. So now it's going to be uh, like that. And let's um, adjust the temperature. So maybe I'm just going to change this to 8. And also I'm going to adjust the glow. And uh, that's it. It's uh, looking really um, good. So the next uh, thing that I'm going to do is uh, let's add some sort of cinematography to this. Like let, let's um, stage this like it's in a uh, movie. And uh, let's like introduce a cut that when she looks at here, bef before she does this um, like head tilt, we're gonna like zoom in to her face. So I'm going to select all of this and put all of this in one comp. So I'm gonna, that's Command Shift C or that's Control Shift C if you're working in a Windows computer, Command Shift C if you're working on a Mac. And I'm just gonna change this to Shot 1. So something like that. And before she does this head, tilt i'm going to cut this so i there is a shortcut that's command shift d or that's control shift that's command shift d if you're working on a mac that's control shift d if you're working on a windows computer and then now i have like two of this comp and for the second one i'm going to change uh the scale to something like zoomed in so let's have a look and um, I want the because if you're working with cameras you you have lots of setting like the uh, the lens the focal point etc you, you can you know adjust them and I want like the uh, the background to have that parallax um, effect so I need to duplicate this shot one. I'm gonna duplicate this, uh, that's Command D. If you're working on a Mac, Control D if you're working on a Windows computer. So I have no shot two. 
So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this and hold the Alt key or Option key. So this is now the Shot 2 Comp and Shot 1 Comp. And for the Shot 2 Comp, I'm going to go inside of here. And for the background, I am going to zoom that in. Change the scale, maybe around something like that. And let's go back to our main comp. And now we have something um, like that. And I'm just gonna continue and refine this. And then I'll show you the, the output. So that's it. Let me know in the comments section if you like this new format, this uh, time-lapse uh, thing. And I hope you learned uh, something today. Also, if, uh, if you think that the time-lapse is too fast, uh, we'll post the, the time-lapse video, I mean the full recording of, of the video in its normal speed, not the sped up uh, version. We'll post that on Patreon. So our Patreon is $5 a month and what you get is benefits. And one of the benefit is you'll get access to our project files. So the project file of this video, it will also be posted on, on Patreon. So currently we have around 41 project files. And uh, what are other benefits? You also have access to templates, templates that we have made and also other bonuses like uh, the full recording of this video and uh, other bonuses and uh, that's it um, thank you very much for your time i hope you enjoyed today's session and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already thanks and see you next time